Hi, everyone. It is such a great honor to be back in London to give another TEDx talk on a subject that I hold so dearly in my heart. You see, my passion for mental health is born out of personal experiences. On one hand, I have been a professional caregiver treating people with mental illness for the past 18 years. On the other hand, I have also been an informal caregiver caring for a loved one with a serious mental illness. When I was a doctoral student in the United States 10 years ago, there was a time when I felt I was sliding into depression. I forced myself to go and seek help. Unfortunately, I could not access the appropriate services that I needed. So I resorted to reading up and teaching myself the skills that I could use to overcome my depression. I survived and I lived to tell that story in my first TEDx talk. Unfortunately, a colleague of mine, a fellow doctoral student, did not survive her depression. So people need a combination of knowledge and skills as part of the strategy to overcome depression. As an African woman, mental health researcher, I face enormous challenges in my day-to-day -day work. If I did not practice the skills I used to push back depression, I would not be standing here before you. There are 350 million people around the world suffering from depression. Eight in 10 of those are living in poor countries, and five of those eight do not have access to treatment. Even well-funded health services, such as those provided to persons with HIV AIDS, do not provide mental health care. It is this state of affairs and my personal experiences that motivated me to develop and test a culturally sensitive group talk therapy that could be used as a first line treatment to treat depression in persons living with HIV AIDS. Now, soon after the initial evaluations of that therapy had indicated that it was highly effective against depression and the results were published in the Lancet HIV, the Ministry of Health mental health program in my country teamed up with Makere University Department of Psychiatry and created the SICK GSP program with funds from Grand Challenges Canada and NQ Transforming Mental Health, a charity based here in London. SICK GSP stands for Social, Emotional and Economic Empowerment through knowledge of group support psychotherapy. In this program, we train health workers working in health centers, who in turn train community health workers working in the villages to go out in the villages and create awareness by giving health talks on depression, identify persons with depression, and treat them using culturally sensitive group talk therapy. Now, to understand what depression looks like in the African context, I would like you to meet Simon. A 35-year-old father of four living with HIV AIDS. Two years ago, Simon had no interest in working in his garden. He preferred to stay at home alone with minimum interaction with his family. As a result, 
he could not provide food and basic needs for the family. His children dropped out of school. Simon spent most of the day, every day, drinking alcohol. And at times, he was violent to his wife. His physical health was in bad shape. Simon was suffering from depression, but he did not know this. When Simon came to the Sikh GSP program, he was asked to join a group of other men having similar challenges to receive culturally sensitive group talk therapy. The group was facilitated by a male community health worker. They met once a week for eight weeks, and this is what they learned. Number one, they learned how to seek and enhance emotional and social support. Number two, they learned how to increase their social connections and grow their social network. Number three, they learned how to practice positive coping skills, in particular, those required to deal with stigma and discrimination. And number four, they learned how to practice income generating skills. Today, Simon and his group members are physically and mentally healthy. They started a beekeeping project as well as a sunflower garden project from which they've earned thousands of Uganda shillings. Simon is able to provide food and basic necessities for his family. His children are back in school and the relationship with his wife has improved. We have tested this therapy again in a much larger study using the most vigorous scientific methods. And these are our major findings. Unlike other programs used to treat depression, the completion rates in the Sikh GSP program are much higher than those reported in other programs. Eight in 10 of the participants complete all the eight group therapy sessions. Just six months after the treatment, 99 of every 100 participants achieved remission of their depression and they remain depression free 12 months later. This profound effect on depression has not been demonstrated by any other program. Further, 12 months after treatment, 95 of every 100 participants report improvement in adherence to antiretroviral therapy, as well as improvement in their viral load suppression. This means that participants in the sick GSP program are less likely to transmit the HIV virus. Again, a finding that has only been reported by the sick GSP program. The cost of delivering culturally sensitive group talk therapy is six times less that which other programs use to treat depression. Thus far, we have delivered group talk therapy to about 3,000 people in northern Uganda where we implemented this program. However, the burden of depression is so huge and there are so many Simons in Uganda and across the continent who need treatment. We also need to train more community health workers to deliver the group talk therapy in the villages. If treating depression with a sick GSP program can save a family from famine, 
can save a woman from domestic violence, can return children to school, can reduce alcoholism and prevent HIV transmission, then we should all advocate for the use of this program to create healthy and economically productive communities. I thank you for your attention.